the private record. We got like a, I mean, this is like an intense, a really intense story. Uh, it involves something called, which I was unaware, completely unaware of before hearing this story. Our guest's name is Becca. She's very sweet, very cool, very kind, and has a just this crazy story. Uh, somebody, how do you how do you even say this? Somebody com- committed pedestrian suicide using her, and I think that's the best way to say it. They used her to commit pedestrian suicide. That's the way to say it. I didn't know what pedestrian suicide was. Once I learned from Becca during this interview, I it made sense. It's, I mean, I was just going to say something fucked up. I was going to say it's a very creative way to kill yourself. It it, it it's a very up way to kill yourself though because you're involving someone unwittingly and unwillingly and and i don't like that so that's my take on that anyway becca went through it it was obviously a very fucked up experience she kind of ends up having a sense of humor about it which i think is essential if you experience something this fucked up uh and i appreciated that i think i think you will too uh but yeah Becca's story about pedestrian suicide. I'm going to leave it at that. If you want to be a guest on the show, go to theprivaterecord.com and submit yourself as a potential guest. I look forward to hearing your story. Of course, follow us on all socials, Instagram, TikTok, at The Private Record. And of course, of course, of course, the most of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Private Record. Like and comment and do all those things that you know help us out. I appreciate you. I appreciate if you do that, but I appreciate you anyway. As I always say, I love you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Wow, thank you so much for washing. Thank you so much for washing my body every time you watch this show. No, but seriously, thank you so much for watching or listening, however you take this in. I very much appreciate you. I love you. Thank you. I'll talk to you again soon. All right. Welcome to The Private Record, Becca. Uh, it's good to have you. We are excited to hear your story. If you don't mind, would you briefly introduce yourself and maybe give us like the headline or genre of the story, however you see fit? Yeah, my name is Becca. I am 27 years old. I live in Beaufort, Georgia. And when I was 22, somebody used my car for pedestrian suicide. Wow, that's a first. Maybe the only one we ever hear, but I am more than ready. Uh, All right, let's get into it. Yeah, so I was driving home from work. It was really, it was like 2 a.m. I left work. It was January 27th, 2019. Um, I lived about 30 minutes from my job at that point. It was on the south side of Atlanta. And I put my car just like on cruise control, just under 70. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sleepy. I just got up work. So like I wasn't intoxicated or anything. And so I just turned my music up so I wouldn't get sleepy and just put my car on cruise control and went. And when I got to this one overpass, it's an exit where 75 splits to 285, which is like our interstate that goes around Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That's also the same exit to get to the airport. It's a very unlit overpass, very unlit area because there's zero pedestrian access. It's mm-hmm. probably half a mile to a mile from any exit that would have any kind of pedestrian access. Um, so as I got under that bridge, um, if you ever hit a deer, you know, you you kind of don't have any reaction time. <laughs> well, yeah, I just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure just, it's the darkness alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she had been working, w- walking perpendicular just across the lanes since it was so empty. She just saw my headlights in the distance and, um, I was the one she chose. <laughs> and, um, I, I just kind of remember seeing a flash of a person Yeah. and the detective said he could tell I, I tried to swerve to avoid her. Clearly I was unsuccessful. <laughs> right. Right. And like, I, I was in the far left lane and next to me was like the carpool lane. And, um, I, you could see kind of the dents from her on my front right oh. corner of my, of the side. And I went straight towards the median to this day. I can't tell you how my fight or flight kicked in so well that I yeah. controlled my car the way I did. But when I hit the median, I had attempted to swerve back right so when i hit the median i hit it with my wheel and my wheel completely oh. snapped off with the bolt still attached whoa and then i mm-hmm, so then i spun out across like six lanes and traveled a pretty far distance until i i hit the guardrail but when i hit the guardrail i hit it with my like corner bumper mm-hmm. so 
I never hit anything head on right, to make right. my airbags deploy to shatter any glass. I never hit my head. I walked away really sore and with a scratch this big from my seatbelt. And that's it. That's it. So just, I know there's more to the story, but I want to talk about mm -hmm. this part real quick. Yeah. How, at what, at what point, if you can even remember, like, did you, did it ever cross your mind that you had hit a person until you knew, like, obviously saw the aftermath and everything, but. It took a second because when I finally came to a stop, I was just sitting there. I was like, there's no way that just happened. Like, right. There's no yeah. way. There's, yeah. There's no totally. way. Yeah. And I like opened my door. It was so cold that night. It was mm. like 18, 20 degrees. Um, and I remember opening my door and like I said, there'd been nobody on the interstate, mm -hmm. but finally there was like another car coming. They didn't stop, but just in their headlights, I saw like a lump on the ground. And that's when it really kind of oh, wow. sank in for me. Oh, wow. That is... Yeah. So there's nobody else around on the road even then too. So you're basically alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, yep. you must have just... Uh, when I get that that scared and that shaken up, I almost I almost always lose my memory of, of exactly yeah. what even happened. A lot of it's a blur. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, at, so then what do you, like, what do you do then in this, what did you do then in this situation? Did you call 911 so, immediately or did they just yeah, show up I'll, or like? I'll walk you through the parts I do remember because okay. between, like you said, how terrified I was and the adrenaline spike, so much of it is a blur. I don't really yeah. remember a lot of the timeline of right. who showed up when yeah, I yeah. just remember like certain instances. So I, after I just completely lost it, um, my phone had gone flying through my car. It was on a magnetic mount. So then I had to hunt for my phone. Oh my I God. Called, yeah. I called 911. I don't know how they understood what I was saying because yeah. <laughs> I was just incoherent babbling at that point. Um, mm. And when I got off the phone with her, the first people to arrive, I know it was the the hero unit, which is like the first response from DOT here in mm -hmm. Georgia. Like mm -hmm. people with the big trucks with the light lit up signs yeah. that the lane is closed. They got there first and they came over to my car to check on me. And they kind of got me talking through what happened so that mm -hmm. I could form sentences when the police showed up. Yeah. Um, and I remember one of them, he was like, so how fast were you going? And I said, well, my, my cruise control was set on like 68. He said, mm, speed limit 65. So what was your cruise control set oh, on? I was wow. like, 65. He said, there you go. Whoa. <laughs> like, so he's like immediately on your side. Yeah. I mean, either to... way, e even if like, I, no matter what, it's not my fault. And I know that. Oh, um, uh, that well, that but, was my next question though. Yeah. Like, like at any point, because knowing the way my mind works, or at least the way I think my mind works, if I'm putting myself in your situation, there's a part of me in the back of my mind that I I I think would start to think, are people like, is this going to get somehow twisted mm -hmm. to be my fault? Yeah. And that would that would kick in, scare the living shit out of me at least for sure. Before I had that any was answers. a major fear of mine. Okay, I'm, yeah, and like. On one hand, I knew I didn't do anything wrong. Of course, you know, right? But, but yeah, but you don't know what other like, people are going to think. Am right? I going to yeah. get arrested for vehicular manslaughter? Yeah, right now? <laughs> totally. Yeah, it was terrifying. Yeah, and um, so they they kind of got me talking. I can't tell you when the police showed up, when mm -hmm. the ambulance showed up. I mm -hmm. I can't tell you. Um, I do remember one. So I was just kind of huddling in my car, trying to keep warm, mm -hmm. and because my car wouldn't even turn on, I was just trying to stay out of the wind. And most of the officers, since I was stopped on the shoulder, were standing in like the far right lane. Mm. Um, and I remember at one point, one of the sergeants, he came, came up to me, just kind of squatted down. And he was like, he asked me, you know, how old are you? And I said, I'm, I'm 22. Oh, man. <laughs> and he was like, you know, I'm so sorry. You know, I have a daughter similar to your age. We see so many terrible things that unfortunately we get a little numb to it. And yeah, we have yeah. to remind ourselves to be human when people experience trauma. So I just want you to know that I am so sorry. And this should have never happened to you. Wow. And I just started crying all over yeah, again. Um, right. And after I had gotten off with 911 initially, before anybody had even mm -hmm. showed up, I, I called my parents. And let me tell you, 
waking your mom up at two in the morning, oh, yeah, telling her you yeah. just killed somebody. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't recommend that phone call. <laughs> um, she said because she was so sleepy who she only got bits and pieces of what I was saying yeah. too. She basically just heard like car accident, killed somebody, me crying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure um, she was absolutely. Yeah. I mean, bes- beyond just being totally frazzled, like what is even happening? It's 2 a.m. and I'm getting a call. Beyond that, yeah. she must have just been scared out of her mind. Even if you were clearly able to state what happened, I would imagine any parent in that situation is just mm-hmm. like horrified, yeah. you know? They were. Um, so her and my dad hopped <laughs> in the car and um, they asked me where I was. I told them and they, they were like, okay, we'll call you back as soon as we're on the road. Mm-hmm. So um, they did. And she stayed on the phone with me as I was waiting for everybody to arrive. And um Anytime someone would need to talk to me, I'd hang up and call her back afterwards. And um, I, I'm not even to the craziest part, second craziest part of the story, by the yeah, way. Gets, yeah, no, it gets uh, take, worse. Take your time, though. I'm, I'm curious as to how it all unfolds. You know what I mean? Yeah. So eventually one of the medics came to my car and um, we were, he, he was checking me out because, like I said, physically, I was yeah, fine. Right. Physically, at least. Mentally, emotionally. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Totally messed up. So I, I was giving him my release signature. He sat in my car with me, um, uh, to kind of check me out and everything. And all of a sudden I see these, these lights from behind me and I hear people yelling, get out of the way, get out of the way. Because the, there was a drunk driver that, um, went on the exit ramp for 285 because that was still open oh and cut across the barricade because they didn't like that the lanes were shut down and came flying through the accident investigation what and i turn and i see one of the officers that's standing next to my car go up over his hood they hit the officer and he just goes flat onto the asphalt so then I scream bloody murder and start sobbing all over again. <laughs> oh my God. It's like a cursed longitude, yeah. latitude, axis yeah. area. Like anything, you yeah. just don't be right there ever. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Still to this day, I have not driven on that stretch of 75 I mean, and I don't think I ever will. I that's, can't. That's so cr- I've never heard of anything even close to this. No. So it sounds like a movie plot, right? Because yeah. why would this happen? Yeah, why it sounds like happen? a it sounds like a bad movie. Like you'd read it or see it on screen, yes. read the script or see it on screen, and think yeah. that's stupid. That would never happen. But yeah, okay. So now it's just another. Uh huh. But this one is like that driver in that case is obviously completely culpable for that. And did they yes. drive away? Did they keep going? No, he stopped. Oh he stopped. wow! Every single officer surrounded that car, drew their guns. Oh the my god! That was in my car. Yeah, I just sat there sobbing and watching all of this happen. Whoa. And the medic that was in my car, he goes, stay here and like yeah. hops out and goes to tend to him. And I just remember calling my mom back and saying, I know it doesn't sound like I can't, it could get any worse, but it did. It's just <laughs> yeah. like, what now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. So, wow. Um, yeah, two for one special that night. Um, so wait, hold on a second. Okay, so. Did the, I mean, this is going to get a little graphic and if you don't want to get too no, into it, it's fine. I, I'm Did, totally open talking to it. So ask okay. me whatever you want. The cop, I'm assuming died. That's the thing. He and I both walked away without a broken bone. A what? So, <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Okay. So, okay. So at yep. least there's only one, not that this is good, but yeah. at least there's only one dead person and it's the person yeah. you so hit who I, meant to die at least. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, I found that out because like they immediately loaded him up in the ambulance that was meant for me and raced him off to the hospital. And so I had no idea what happened to him. I assumed he died too. Right. Yeah. Um, but like a week and a half later, when they finally released my car to insurance, um, the detective, like I asked him, I was like, is he okay? Yeah. He's like, oh yeah. He didn't even break a bone. And I was like, that's what? crazy. He's like made out of yeah. rubber. That's not even yeah. something I I can even imagine. How do yeah. you not break a bone? You get hit by a speeding know. drunk driver, go flying through the air, splat on the ground, and you yeah. don't break a bone. You're you're living right. Some some somehow. Yeah. Who knows? Speaking know. of speaking of, I mean, not to be crass, bodies. 
Well, when you're waiting, going back a little bit before anybody even arrives, and it's you alone on an open road, you are coming to the realization that you hit someone. Obviously, you, I mean, maybe not obviously, I'm assuming though that you don't know that that person was trying to commit suicide at, at yet. Because mm -hmm. in your mind, you're too all over the place, right? Yeah. To, yeah, yeah. Okay. So w w do you even, you said you saw like the outline of the deceased person in the headlights of another car. Are you just like, I'm not even going near that? I don't want to yeah, look. Yeah, I, did, I didn't even, yeah. I didn't even try. And so how did you come to learn, like how, or rather, how did the cops come to the conclusion that it was that? Like, how did they know? I'm sure they see that kind of thing a lot. So what are the <clears throat> signs that it was, was what it was? Um, really just because <clears throat> number one, the way she was walking, it wasn't mm. like she was walking on a shoulder with traffic. She was walking across. Right. Um, and the fact that I had been the only car yeah. anywhere near. Right, right, right. You could happen easily to walk in yeah, front of yeah. my car. And then um the fact that there was also we still I, I still have no idea how she even got to where she was. Um because um, like I said, it was solid half mile to a mile in either direction from any kind of exit with pedestrian access. Like the exit that we were right. that she was walking under, it was just another interstate. There wasn't any any kind of pedestrian access it was you couldn't easily so, get there without entering correct. from way far yeah. away and then walking to where you were mm -hmm. god i mean mm -hmm. not that it even is a material in the sense of the story you're telling but i i wonder what the fuck it is that mm -hmm. brings like you know you hear about suicide in a number of ways why because i actually have a, a friend of mine um in a somewhat similar situation to you, was driving on the freeway in LA and then under, he went under an overpass. There was like a walkway for pedestrians above where he was driving and someone totally unbeknownst to him leapt off committing suicide or intending to and got, happened to hit my friend's car. And my friend was the one that not only killed the person or completed the suicide, if you will, but saw like it just so happened the way the person fell onto the windshield like he saw the person so it like yeah. fucked up this fucked my friend up like for yeah. years mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. because of the i think i think obviously the situation is terrible all around but i think because of the face-to-faceness of the i can't the even moment. imagine that yeah. like that i i'm so glad it was nighttime at yeah. least because i can't even imagine seeing like experiencing it is horrible enough yeah but yeah seeing the face on your windshield yeah I, mm -mm. It's, no it, it's, i i can't people talk about suicide and i know everybody's got specific feelings about it some people think it's just so terrible that anybody would do that or it means they're weak or whatever bullshit uh and then there are people who are very sympathetic or empathetic but it does i do wonder about the the kind of person who wants to commit suicide and so badly or chooses of all the ways to do it to involve someone completely innocent yeah. and nothing to do with them, just like at random almost. You know what I mean? It's it's a that really strange. One of, that's been one of the worst parts um, yeah. for me to try to figure out how to handle because yeah. as someone who's dealt with, you know, depression, anxiety mm. since I was in high school. Yeah. Um, you know. I've always been very sympathetic to any kind of mental health struggles. The fact that mental health um, has become such a normal thing to talk about in yeah. recent years, it's a beautiful thing to see. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never been one to say people who die by suicide are really selfish. Yeah, yeah. Like I get why people would feel that way. That's not, I don't share those feelings, mm -hmm. but I think to involve someone totally innocent and force yeah. them to take part in your suicide mm -hmm. is the most selfish thing you can do. That for I the rest of my life, I yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the other thing I, the main thing I wanted to talk about, which is like, how do you, it's so, it's kind of so complicated when you think about it. Like, how, so how did, mm -hmm. cause even my question, how do you deal with it? It, 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 there's a dead person there. And it's like, there's oh, so many other people that are probably affected by this person's suicide, ostensibly, people yeah. who know that person or whatever. But like, you are just as involved now as anyone else, and if not more so than someone who might have mm -hmm. loved that person. So what? Yeah. 
are the steps you take? I mean, like the next day, like, let's talk about that. Yeah. Like, where is so your head? It, it, we did not leave until after five in the morning. By the time my parents, when they, I remember when they finally got there, I bolted straight to my mom. And mm. as soon as she hugged me, my legs just gave out. And mm. my dad had to like half drag me to the car. Um, yeah. And we had to be there way longer than expected because after I gave my statement statement to Clayton County PD and wrote that out, I gave it to the officer. He was like, I'm going to need another one from you. And I was like, why? Mm. He said, you witnessed the officer involved accident. So state patrols on their way. You need to give another statement to them. Oh okay, my God. Great. Wow. So um, we didn't leave until after five in the morning. People were starting to go to work. Um, morning rush hour was beginning in Atlanta. And yeah. um so but when we got home, I took Zequel and tried to knock myself out because my adrenaline was still so high. I, yeah. There was no way I was getting mm -hmm. a second of sleep. And I still only slept about two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. I woke up at 9 a.m. Uh, with Zequel in my system. Right. And when I went downstairs, <laughs> the words good morning didn't even come out of my mouth. And my mom looks at me and she goes, I called your therapist. Do you have an appointment at one? <laughs> <laughs> that's mom. a good mom that is a good yeah. mom yeah, yeah. that that's yeah. an on top of it mother right there okay yeah. so <laughs> she had so. a she was helping to you know because i think in those situations to even realize god i need to talk about this might take a minute mm -hmm. so it's kind of amazing yeah. that she was like nope you're out of bed you're going to this thing because you're yeah. gonna need it yeah. no matter what you think yeah yep yeah. i think my point was at like one o'clock and um i drove myself wow to this day, I've never had an issue driving. Okay, so um, even right even after you even were just like, at night. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I drove, but I think that's because I I made peace with it that night that I didn't do anything wrong. Right. Yeah. Because, yeah. um, I, like I didn't. Yeah, I, I mean that's, that is true. Texting anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah. the the one thing is, if there's like a close call on the road and somebody almost hits me. Mm -hmm part right through the roof yeah. uh jaywalkers scare the crap out of me yeah oh yeah. my god i so most of the time if there is i have to pull over and just kind of like <sighs> calm down i can't um yeah that makes but, sense yeah uh, and then just kind of in my day-to-day -day life I'm, I'm more jumpy mm -hmm. um but i've never had like the nightmares flashbacks anything mm. like that when you like, like how hollywood portrays yeah. your stereotypical ptsd symptoms that's not something i've i've personally ever experienced um so the, what made this whole thing so much worse is i was in the process of moving down to savannah okay and, and how how accident, far is savannah from from atlanta four hours. Talk, oh okay D a good, four hours a good from distance, where i lived yeah. it's about like three three and a half from atlanta <laughs> Um, and I, this accident happened two weeks before my move-in date. Mm. So, um, then I'm so stressed out trying to figure out, I don't have a car. Mm. How am I yeah. still going to go down there right now? Um, yeah. I did, I did still do it. I went to, I saw my therapist every other day before I moved. Wow. Um, but I, I went, it took a week and a half for them to release my car to insurance to total it out. And I was left with three days to buy a car before I moved. Wow. Um, so Jeez. that was, again, just so stressful. Um, and the, so I went and, but I remember when the detective did call me to let me know they're releasing my car. That's when I asked him if the officer was okay. But yeah. then he also asked me, he said, do you want to know anything about that person? I said, hell no. Yeah. I don't. I yeah. don't because I know myself if I know her name because I do know it was a woman I remember the outline of a woman and that's all I know uh, I, but yeah. if I know her name I'm going to be looking her up I'm going to know what family she left behind if she had any kids and then I'm never going to move on yeah it's, I'm just going to be wrapped with guilt and so I said absolutely not I can't I just can't to be able to process it, it it for lack of a better word I had to kind of dehumanize it yeah um and not know a name so that I could deal with it yeah um I mean, that, so, yeah, that would that would certainly be, I would imagine, the hardest part if you did. I mean, it's good that they asked you and they were so mm -hmm. considerate of what you might want, want to or not want they to know. They were very kind to me through the whole thing. Yeah, that's good. I mean, that's not always the case, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, I mean, that was going to be a question. You, you, I, by the way, 
100% would have said the same thing. I would not. Because mm-hmm. like you, it's like the more you know, even the tiniest detail, I could see myself just lingering on that, rolling it mm-hmm. over in my mind. And then, you know. I'm already you, dwelling on enough. I don't need to dwell on that right. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. It, again, if if there was any part of you that, even if it wasn't true, that believed you were somehow culpable or responsible, then that would, and there isn't obviously, and then nor should there be. But like, mm-hmm. I have the kind of mind, I worry about things like this, not like I'm always looking out for them, but I hear about things like this. And I just think, I wonder if I would like figure out a way to, to still be, like make up shit that wouldn't mm-hmm. be my fault even like did you ever at any point it sounds like you're therapized early on about it so i, I mm-hmm. maybe not but was there any part of you that was like but what if that, that you know what i mean like coming up with reasons why we could have even though it's not true you know what i'm saying i don't think so not once um, that's good and that's good. yeah that that has made it easier to deal with what i've dealt with more than that instead of like the what ifs, yeah. it's the anger yeah. of why did this have to happen? Why yeah. did this have to, have to happen when I was 22? I was a baby. Yeah. Why did this happen? It have to happen to anybody. Why did she make that choice? Just the anger of knowing that I'm going to be dealing with this for the rest of my life. That's what I, I feel more than anything because yeah. I, I do know I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Um, uh, my feelings have been validated since that night by multiple people, by my therapist uh, telling me I'm completely valid in how I right. feel and not yeah. wanting to know anything about her, mm-hmm. like everything like that. So I don't think I've ever once kind of questioned what if I did this? What if this yeah. happened? Like any anything like that. It's just more of the anger I feel towards her. Yeah, that's got to be tough too because there's nowhere to put that anger. You know, it's like yeah. you can't, there's, yep. it's the person who you might even be able to direct it at even if that person was still alive it's like it wouldn't even make sense to direct it at but yeah. but 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 yet there is still that anger and so what do what do you do with it like how do you deal with it it's not well a lot of the times <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> you know when i I think moving to Savannah ended up being one of the hardest things I ever did because mm. I, I lived down there for about three and a half years before I moved back home about a year ago to be closer to my family again. And, um, you know, being in a city where I knew maybe two people, mm. I was four hours from my whole support system. I had to find a new therapist. I had to find a trauma therapist. I had to find um, a new psychiatrist to get properly medicated Mm -hmm. to deal with my PTSD symptoms. Mm -hmm. Um, Just that was so much to handle. And it took a long time to figure it all out, Um, trying to figure out healthy coping mechanisms. And um, because I think one one of the biggest things I deal with, with the form of PTSD that I have is struggling, two things, struggling to control my emotions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, um, things I would normally react to at like a five, I'd react to it like a 30, that mm. overstimulation. Mm-hmm. I, I get overstimulated a lot easily. I can get like agitated more easily if my anxiety spikes. And mm. um, that is really difficult. Um, and then just the complete lack of energy. It's like it mm. multiplied any kind of depression symptoms by a hundred. And um, I, just days I couldn't get out of bed. I found found it hard to shower. I found it hard to just exist. Um, And that was so hard. It never got to the point where it's like, I wanted to make the choice to die by suicide. It was just like zero energy, just zapped. I I felt numb. I was apathetic to everything. Um, I still still deal with that every now and then. I'll hit Mm. a low. But thankfully, through the amount of therapy I've had and um, the, the medication that I'm currently on, um, cause I, I was on an antidepressant, but then my PTSD started kind of mimicking symptoms of bipolar too. So mm. we were like, is it bipolar? Cause like the back and forth between like my extreme lows, mm-hmm. but, um, then no, it turns out PTSD can mimic those symptoms. Yeah. So, um, we tried out a mood stabilizer that mm-hmm. really tackles the lows of bipolar two and added that on to my antidepressant. Mm-hmm. 
and my god did that do a world of difference oh wow that's amazing um yeah yeah it was it was great so that that has been like a blessing to figure finally get a medicine combination because it took so long to figure one out that was so much trial and error it always is no matter what psychiatric medication you're talking about it's true medication in general it's always some kind of trial and error which sucks it does yeah um but yeah yeah i mean that's interesting that you know you mentioned ptsd and people that have zero familiarity with it understandably i think think of it as this one thing that manifests in this one way that like is something soldiers have or people who have experienced like you know uh how hollywood portrays it that's what everybody thinks completely yeah. yeah and i and i understand why people think that way but my limited experience with it and people i know who suffer with it it is almost never similar to one case to another case to another case, mm-hmm. you know? And that, again, it requires this trial and, trial and error. And the hardest part, at least in my experience, about any kind of trial and error with, in terms of medication is, it's not just try this, let me know how it is after a couple of days. Oh, that didn't work? Okay, try this, let me know in a couple of days. Some of these things, it's yeah, like, wait. okay, you gotta wait six weeks to know if it's really taking effect. And then mm-hmm. it's like, even after those six weeks, you're like, well, maybe it is a little bit better, but you know, it's like, okay, well, we'll give it another six weeks and see if it really is, the, but, you know what I mean? It's just like- Let's try bumping your dose, see if yeah, that works exactly. even better. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can mean, I that, just have one thing that works immediately? <laughs> I know. Where's the one drug yeah. that works for everybody, uh, for every single ailment? Yeah. Um, but that, you know, to talk about anger, you're also dealing with, these are things that make anger grow, having to do this, having to, yeah, you know, I could, see, you know, if you're dealing with this, like, okay, now I got to deal with another medication. It's not working. I got to deal with, it's like all of these things, even the depression you mentioned, I, I, you know, in my own bouts with depression, it's like, there's no, there's nothing stopping me. In fact, it happens almost every time it gets severe. I get mad at whatever I perceive is causing the depression or mm-hmm. which is often myself, but it's like anger is right next. It's like the best friend of these yeah. things, you know? And so absolutely, it, 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 if the anger is already an issue to begin with, I could see it being sort of triggered by mm-hmm. every single step that you had to take along the way, you know? Uh, and, and I've, I've never been one that's super emotional. So uh-huh. to suddenly have my emotions be like times a thousand that yeah. made me even angrier because it was like why am i crying all the time i'm not a crier like I'm right, not right someone that cries if someone talks at them too loudly because they think they're yelling like i'm yeah. not that person <laughs> and so like to suddenly be crying all the time then i got even more angry and that yeah. just it's just a oh, vicious man. cycle it's crazy how much the actions of someone you've never met have nothing to do with can not only affect you or anyone at any given time, but can have such a pronounced, profound effect on other people. You know, uh, it's just, it, 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 it makes me think one of two things. That person who committed suicide that night and used your car as the weapon to do so, either was in such a bad place that they couldn't possibly think about someone and the pain they're causing someone else. It was just the quickest, easiest in their mind way to do it. Or they're just such an enormous piece of shit that they don't even have the ability to yeah. cognitive, you know, to the wherewithal to be like, well, wait, that no might actually be terrible. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, yeah. it's just, it's, it's, it's wild, you know? I know. Uh, and like, it's gotten to the point where I'm, Compared to where I was, it'll be five years in January since the, the which the anniversary effect. Mm. Oh my God, that's terrible. What Um, happened? Like, do you, yeah, talk about that. What is that like? Yeah. Yeah. So the first year, the first anniversary of the accident, the whole month of January, I was fucked up. Like the whole month. um, I was like disassociating every single day. I was just kind of barely existing i found it hard to really talk to people at work and then mm. it was horrible but it the time i've been down has shortened every single year mm. this past year um i was down for maybe three to four days i i was very numb for 
couple days before I didn't get out of bed the day of, and then mm. I had like a recovery day and then I was okay. Mm. Um, so it, like it, it gets better every year. I will still be dealing with it for the rest of my life, but, mm. um, yeah, the anniversary effect, brutal, brutal, brutal. It's not fun. It's like, like yeah. your subconscious just knows what day it is Yeah, right. and yeah. It, you just, you think it knows it's coming. That's what was so wild that first year. Cause like starting January 1st, like I started feeling it mm. and like the whole month, my subconscious was like, Oh, the day's coming. The day's yeah. coming. The day's coming. And it, just this dread, mm -hmm. this like mm -hmm. mounting dread. Yeah. That's yeah. gotta be tough. Uh, I'm curious, you know, the, the, do you know, I mean, it could be a number of things, which is why I, I, I thought to ask you this, but I'm curious if you don't mind talking about this a little bit. The do you can you pinpoint the reason that you are angry? Like, is it simply because this person is it because of the the randomness? And it was like, how could it is it like how could it be me that this happened to? Or is it more directed at the individual? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like I would say it's probably 50-50. <laughs> yeah. It's both. Um <clears throat> I, I joke all the time that I feel like I'm one of the unluckiest people I've ever met. <laughs> sure, yeah. Well, this would be evidence but of that. This so is why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but also just at that person for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, like like, but again, it's like we said earlier. Like, why would this happen? Right. Why would this happen to yeah. anybody? Why would this ridiculous situation? Yeah. Of like not only someone jumping in front of my car, but then yeah. the drunk driver with the officer. Like, why <laughs> why would all that happen? Yeah. Um unless it was just a bad script right um, yeah. so it's just like it's both both of those things just piss me off honestly yeah. so bad yeah i mean the the why thing just asking why obviously i think it's very human i do it all the time why why me why would it happen like this why was this or that whatever and there's never a, an, a good answer. There is no why. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my, I don't know how, how you feel about this, th these things, but I find that at least when I'm in the situation where somebody comes to me and they're asking me why, why this, why, you know, and I just think the only thing I can think of is like, you, it's, it's best to not concern yourself with why, because the more you ask why, you're just never going to get an answer. And so it's just like the why of it is, it's not that it is meaningless, but for all intents and purposes, there's no help behind asking why, because you're never gonna, gonna get the answer. And mm -hmm. what I would imagine is that that only, again, feeds the beast of the anger that you have about the whole entire situation, you know? It, mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine going through it on your end. I can't, I, I, you know. My therapist told me to just kind of like, she was like, this might be a terrible analogy, but kind of think of yourself as a toddler. And I was like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was like, you know how toddlers, they'll ask you questions that you don't have the answer to. And they're like, well, why? But why? Mm -hmm. But why? Yeah, 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 yeah. She was like, that's kind of what you're asking yourself. And mm -hmm. there's no answer and that's okay. Um, yeah. And as soon as she said that, I was like, huh. Wow, that's interesting. Oh, wow, that is actually a very... Uh, clever sort of way of Analogy, putting it to yeah. you yeah like that's very that really tracks i think it's a good way yeah. to think of it because you know when we're around kids like that we're like stop fucking like, asking you shut asking up I don't know. You know I mean? yeah <laughs> but like from their point of view they're not doing it to be annoying they want to know why and it's yeah. not they're not being annoying they actually have good reasons you know but there's no answer it doesn't change the fact that there is no answer you know uh, so if you're asking yourself why you are that toddler exactly and there is yeah. no answer yeah yeah that's a really good way to put it i mean it's a good place to wrap it up i don't know if there's anything else you wanted to talk about but um no yeah. i think what like what's really besides the obvious like the how it's affected like just like my relationships with mm. just people in general has been so hard um and thankfully the people close to me have been so supportive um and patient with me mm -hmm. but you know someone someone asked me not too long ago like how come like you're never in a relationship and it's mm -hmm. like 
I have enough I'm dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. And well, and their response was, well, but maybe it'll distract you. Right. That's not something. And I was no. like, you know, yeah. no, yeah. no, because I've, I've had two things that have been my priority. It's like, number one, a lot of people are still fairly ignorant to mental health and mm -hmm. what it means to have a partner who yeah. struggles with their mental health and what yeah. that looks like. Mm -hmm. So that fear of ha getting involved with somebody who doesn't understand anything, yeah. Yeah. um, and kind of that rejection of like, oh, she's crazy. <laughs> yeah, which is <laughs> which is a thing. It's totally a yeah, thing. Yeah, it I is. Mean, people it absolutely who, is. Through no fault of their own, people who don't actually have any experience with either depression or anything like in this, you know, anxiety, anything like that, they really, again, through no fault of their own, they have no idea what it's like. And they actually think things like, well, why can't you just get over it? Or valid questions and mm -hmm. those are valid questions for some things but for people with clinical depression or anxiety or in your case actual ptsd that's not something to ask and you yeah. know as you say it's it can be very sort of harmful uh and like how do i put myself out there you know it's yeah. like on what day do i bring this up like yeah, how much do yeah. i get to know somebody before i drop the bomb because like yeah. i'm not trying to sit down on date number one and be like have you ever played frogger like <laughs> that's not, like, that's not yeah. what we're going for and then um so between that but also like i've since the day it happened i've always been the mentality of if i am struggling to give myself the love the care the grace that i need to deal with this how in the hell am i going to mm. invest in a partner and give them yeah. what they need from me because no, i, that's I true. can hardly give myself that right now that part is definitely definitely true you know uh but in the grand scheme of things, it is still rather recent. What oh, you've it experienced. is. That's why it's like so not a priority of mine. And yeah, so when right, people ask yeah. me that, I'm just like, <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. not right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm dealing with enough up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the prospect of, I mean, there's one, it's one thing to have people in your life at the moment something like that happens who know you and then know what it, what, how it affected you so that they can see the bigger picture and understand someone new that you meet will only meet the version that they're coming at now. And so mm -hmm. it, I could totally see why in your mind, it's like this at the moment, you know, not forever, but this, this sort of like issue that's not worth bothering with for now, you know? I mean, the other, yeah. th the other, I guess, Plus, I don't want to say plus side, but the other thing is you really were so young when it happened and you are I was, still so I was young. A baby. Yeah. 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 You got time. Um, mm -hmm. Not that that's any consolation because, you know, <laughs> it still you know, sucks to deal with. Yeah. But yeah I am. Yeah, yeah, I'm 27. Yeah. I'm young. So yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It just yeah. sucks all yeah. around and it's been very hard, but I'm sure we're still here. <laughs> and you Somehow. are clearly able to talk about it, which is always a good thing. Yeah. yeah. And I appreciate that. Um, all right. Well, again, thank you so much for sharing your story, Becca. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I wish uh, you the best of luck. Um, it sounds like you're doing well and that you will continue to do even better in the, in the future. So thank you. Yeah. We're here. Yeah. Yes, we are. And there's nothing <laughs> so we can do about it, that. But we're yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. All right, Becca. Take care of yourself. Thank you. You too. Thanks. <laughs>